So many baits, so little time. Groovy. Holy cow. Shake it, baby. If it bleeds, I can kill it. Last time on Matt and Nukem Forever. Welcome to the conclusion of my epic trek through the fluvial, sweaty cesspool swirling with combined bodily fluids of George Broussard and Randy Pishford. But first, a short PSA. Civi11, he's this weird guy here, put out his own Duke Nukem Forever hot take on his channel a few weeks back as a thank you to his fans slash punishment for himself for crossing 100,000 subscribers. I implore you to either stop this video now or later, whichever you prefer, to give it a watch. It's more concise, it's at least 45% more funny, and his passion for this character, which is an amalgamation of 80s and 90s action heroes, really shines through. Plus, if you gets a 200,000, he'll play Daikatana, maybe. Anyway, on to our shit show. We are starting off with The Shrunk Machine, which is certainly not being subtle about what the thing will be doing the most will be. I stated before how I like the mini duke sections of the game thus far, but my patience, much like Gearbox's coffers once everyone is done suing them, is finite. Now, see all these gray hallways? Hope you find them dynamic and interesting because that's all you're going to see for the rest of the game, no joke. Walk up to these Joe Blow Splamonis here as they give a long-winded introduction to the Freeze Thrower, another throwback weapon that sadly hasn't seen much improvement. Um, you take the Freeze Ray. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be better with it than me anyway, right? <laughs> It freezes enemies, as you'd imagine, but whilst its beam is shooting out, you're taking damage and not really dishing it out. You can shatter enemies, yes, and while I don't care enough to time it, it's probably just faster to take out pig cops with a shotgun if you have one anyway. Now, fighting through these connected rooms, clearing out all the enemies is a fairly frantic and kind of fun fight. There's pipe bombs getting tossed around, and messing with the freeze thrower has a novelty for like the first two minutes. After making dead two enforcers, you'll stumble into some office spaces and a very nice PG-rated calendar that's even holiday themed. Oh yeah, that's my kink right there. Nothing like boobs garnished with pumpkin guts. Now that the immediate threat is gone, follow this maintenance guy until he starts kicking around this weapon on the floor, remarks on the mess you didn't make, Holy crap! You sure left a mess in here! Doesn't look messy to me, and then uses his gloved hand, his gloved hand on the handprint reader. I'll just, I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm bothering commenting on such details. I'm playing Duke Nukem forever, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> start doing this valve puzzle where Duke will then say, I hate valve puzzles. Now this would have been a fine, decent dig if this had been released in 2006 when, you know, Valve used to make games, but I can't blame Duke for realizing how badly this joke would age. You know, not like all his other jokes. Oh yeah, I'm bringing sexy back. You're soon bushwhacked by a herd of pig cops, and while I was bagging on it before, it is satisfying to shatter a frozen enemy, especially when it's done via the mighty boot. What is not so satisfying is the shrinkage you'll now have to do, since we are in, yes, the shrunk machine. Rats, machinery, more rats, unscrewing screws. Not my idea of a good screw. Ah, I get it, Duke. More vents and more platforming. Like I stated before, I got my fill of this back in Duke Burger, and I don't really want seconds, but oh, Here's some seconds. They then throw you into this super hot gear system and it's like some goddamn madman at 3D Gear Realms box thought it was a fine fucking idea to slather the screen in a heat filter that distorts your view while you need to do precise platforming to not get crushed. Yeah, great, thanks. The next room is capped off with a fight against annoying little goblin things which are not so little now cause you're little too. There's also this big guy, an enforcer alien, which I guess by his life bar is now a boss. Run around a little bit until you can get a clear shot to freeze his awful, awful penis, which results in him just 
kind of falling over. Man, that's really weird, because normally when you... Oh, hey, I was explaining something here! Okay, next, just platform onto the guardrail to hit the elevator switch to get us to the fork stop. Whatever that means. Shrink in reverse to get back to normal Duke size, thank god. Listen, while I made that last section seem short, <laughs> It very much wasn't. Look at this horrible leg wound, take a quick gander at some porno, and press this button to raise the shutter door to finally get out of the dam, so you can then be on the perimeter of the dam. Eh, this section is so boring, just long walks around this unremarkable area. No music, no quips. Just a super long fight against waves and ways of octobrains. You can use this turret here if you want, it's flashing, so you might as well. But then something like this might happen. Ah, jeez. Get ready for lots of fights exactly like this one. And if this does look fun to you, well, there's gonna be plenty of it. After you've made them all dead, that's the end of Fork Stop Part 1, I guess. Fork Stop Part 2? And I guess we've solved the mystery of why it's called that, because you get a forklift to drive. How does it control? Well, like a forklift. I say that because you don't actually do anything with this particular lift of fork. You can kill some pig cops, but you actually need to jump off this stationary one to progress, so... Uh, you are then thrust into a super long battle against 40,000 pig cops. They use cover, they toss bombs, they shoot rockets, and you're mostly pinned down the entire time. It's not great. Once that's mercifully done, you just then need to drive this one forklift over here, jump off the back of it, and enter this door to end the forklifting. Like, why were forklifts even a part of this? They don't actually do anything unique or important that couldn't have been done with, like, a single crate. Duke Nukem Forever. Development Blog Day. 1,453. We, we now have working forklifts in the game. I, I, I don't remember why. A Shenmue reference? It's, it's been so long. Please send water. The generator. Just walk down this inconspicuous staircase and bam! There's General Graves! Remember him? He's all hot under the collar, so let's cool him down. He basically tells you the president isn't working with the cycloids and isn't even evil. He's just a dick. And then America is counting on us. So to celebrate, Duke says this. America, fuck yeah. Wow. Anyway, work your way across this room until you meet this old guy called Krusty Old Guy, who is not a very big fan of the tentacles. Can't stand them tentacles in here either. Them things screw the aesthetics all to hell. He then says, Well then, hop on my crane here and I'll swing you over to the other side. Oh boy, I'm sure this will be fun. What transpires is a gauntlet of enemies, jetpack troopers, Octobrains, and finally the Octa King, which sounds like something from Splatoon. More Octobrains also flank the King, so there's something shooting at you pretty much every possible second, and honestly, there's not much you can do here but strafe left to right, firing off the Devastator like crazy and hope you can just tank it. Ugh, finally. RESURRECTION! Until he regains all his health back. Just keep pelting him in this weakened state to finish him off. The crusty old guy then spouts some old shite, so just move on ahead, and if you thought 3D Realms would forget to apply collision to the massive dead body of the Octa King, I'm happy to report, yes. Yes, they did. Ah, good stuff. After such a terrible fight, freshen up in the nearby bathroom, where Duke will say, Look at my ass. Do it now. Okay, so, so first of all, what do you actually want me to do, Duke? Second of all, who are you talking to? And third and most importantly, I can't see your ass from the front, you fucking egomaniac. All right, we are now in, uh, uh, underground, I suppose, and let's start this off appropriately by reading the newest issue of Fun Bags. Flip the page to Areola Centerfold for an ego boost. Man, they're not even trying anymore. Until you get to this next area, and it's getting dangerously close to the hive in here. It's even got the, the, 
the things hanging from the wall, it, but, but it's over quick as Duke then finds himself on the ground floor just below the area you were in earlier. This part, I'm not gonna lie, is kinda neat. To mess up these turbines, you have to find several red tool cabinets and find ways to drop them into said turbine, effectively wrecking the machine and giving you a path forward. And as anyone knows, tool cabinets can be very powerful when applied correctly. Once that's done, head around here and get into these back offices and please take a second to gander at these lovely ladies, which I guess are now diminishing returns as you receive no ego boost from your creepy perving. That was it, that was the first girl, you already saw that one, Duke. And that concludes the amazing level known as Underground 1. I hope you're ready for the wonders of Underground 2. A lot of water in this section and a lot of it is not very good. Duke can't hold his breath for more than 10 seconds, and instead of, like, giving you the scuba gear like in the previous games, you get Sonic 2's bubbles, which of course, always incite fear. Flip some switches, get lost, fast forwarding, fast forward, oh, hi final boss, fast forwarding to the clarifier. Not much to say here, other than it's kind of neat that this big room revolves around this central physics puzzle. You need to find more and more barrels scattered around the area to weigh down this thing, and I don't know, I kind of liked it. It's been a long slog of Duke Nukem forever lately, so I don't really mind collecting things as a change of pace. Once you're done with that though, the sounds of puzzle completion will anger the cycloids, and they'll come a-running, Mancubai in tow. Shoot them with all of your weapons and then move on with your life. The Clarifier, part two. Now the first thing that happens is that this guy, this, this guy I don't know, is killed. Save me! And of course, there was nothing I could do. I did everything correct. You then enter what looks like the latter stages of Resident Evil 2 and fight a bunch of octobrains. Again, and these little, fuck these guys, until you make your way into this dumb room with tons of electrical shit going on and off camera, Dylan had gotten his shit bopped and much like the Duke Burger Room, which feels so long ago, you have to navigate and platform your way across deadly water to get to your Mimbo friend. So Dylan lets us know that the Cycloid Emperor is here. Fucking Cycloid Emperor is here! Yeah, I just said that, and while it was Dylan's job to blow up the Hoover Dam, he did not, so we're going to have to do it in his stead, surprise surprise. Dylan also says, Not enough cover from these pussies! Which I guess is a knock against Gears of War, but Duke Nukem Forever features lots of cover and uses regenerating health, so I guess they're insulting themselves. I don't think 3D Realms is that self-aware. So then Dylan dies doing what he loves, talking about blowing people's asses. Blow it out the Emperor's ass! Uh. The animation of his death also looks like this. That's some gold dust right there. Guess he won't be in the sequel. Ah, and there's that trademark Duke Nukem hum- I Sorry, I mean, there's that trademark Duke Nukem Forever humor making light of a friend who died. You then get ambushed by waves of, guess who? Octobrains. Now, Octobrains were never a good time in Duke 3D, so I'm glad that tradition continues, but there's no real trick with them in this. Don't shoot explosives at them, just dodge their annoying attacks and use a lot of ammo to kill them, I guess. Very good chance of dying here because Dylan was fucking right. There's very little cover on this walkway. You then need to turn this rotating platform thing around, yank on a valve or two and get to the base of the dam to then slap on the explosives. And oh, the sights I still have yet to show you. What then entails is the biggest underwater section the game has to offer, and I want to kill myself. Remember, Duke focuses on strength training, not cardio, so he has the lung capacity of a newborn kitten. So it's not exactly fun flipping lots of switches and valves while running out of breath, all whilst Octo Brains pester you. While swimming, Duke is also slower than the development of Duke Nukem Forever underwater. It's very much the opposite of how similar levels worked in Duke 3D. Once you've approached the main wall of the dam, get prepared for what actually might be the most annoying boss in the game. This, uh, energy leech springs out of a pipe and Duke will have to swim over to the sonic bubbles 
about every 10 seconds while pelting this thing with RPG fire and avoiding its sucking blowing attack, which sucks. This fight is slow, it's frustrating, and I died, so I can only hope future generations will somehow find this more interesting slash novel, like a spaceman from the future smirking at childish cave paintings. The death of this thing is also really unsatisfying because of all the audio feedback is muffled and shit because it's underwater. But don't worry, because this achievement pops up to brighten your day. <sighs> swim through the pipage to start off blowing the dam part two, which shockingly is a fun little sequence. You have to continually move upwards while all these lower levels start to take on water. Shit's exploding, things that fall apart fall apart, and pig cops are trying to book it as well. The classic Aliens countdown voice coupled with the music makes this much more thrilling than about almost everything else in the game. And then there's this joke here. Here's a hammer when you need one. Now, I didn't exactly smile or laugh at this. I, I just, it was a normal joke. It didn't involve making light of someone's death and it wasn't about Duke's dick cock or his ass balls. It was just a simple, wholesome video game reference that wasn't insulting. Some more piggy police officers are causing a ruckus up here and then this weird thing happened to me. Nani? I shot him with the railgun and his head inflated and exploded like I'm goddamn Kenshiro. I don't know if this was a bug or what, but I liked it. Hop into this big pipe and there's a nice little moment here. Duke is then spooted out and I don't know, maybe because he does it so much in this game, I was half expecting him to flip off the Hoover Dam. Fuck you and all those underpaid workers who died building ya. Oh God. And here we go, the final battle. Doesn't this feel weird? Maybe not to you guys watching this because this is all edited with music and shit, but for me, playing up to this point, it's been so dull and lifeless and the fact that we're just at the final boss all of a sudden, it's just such an anti-climax. So starting off, everyone's really impressed Duke is still alive. Holy hell, Duke. I can't believe you're still alive. But you've had all your items and weapons taken away, but don't worry, the EDF has got your back. So here's a pistol. Uh, yeah, thanks. The president's here too, and he starts cutting a promo on Duke before the cycloid emperor comes out of nowhere and murders him. Okay, look, pause here. The game was clearly setting itself up for a presidential heel turn, I, I think, but it never really happens. He wasn't working with the aliens at all. He's just an asshole. I actually would have appreciated, like, something in the story rather than, you know, just nothing. Anyway, Serious Sam then begins. You circle around the boss while backing up, grabbing other weapons while just blasting away. Blasting away until the Emperor's life bar drains three times, each with the same drawn out QTE animation. This is one of the most bland final bosses I've seen in a long, long time. Granted, it's not too different than, say, boss fights in Duke 3D, but at least the three jugged queen and even the graboid thing had some type of gimmick. There's just nothing here. And of course, we then cap this whole thing off in the only way Duke Nukem Forever knows how. General Graves then helps you into the waiting chopper and then there's a sudden cut to credits. Thanks for your $60, dummy. All right, that's not entirely true. First, you know, let's see those credits. No, let's actually just fast forward through them instead. Man, look at all these motherfuckers. You, you know, some of them probably did put their heart and soul into this thing and some probably didn't. Anyway, okay, here, here we go, here we go. Now that the aliens are dead and you've saved the world once again, uh, what are you going to do? I'm gonna run for president. I hope that was worth the 12 years of development. And with that, we conclude Duke Nukem Forever and my journey through it. It's an exercise in ho-hum by the numbers game design, taking as many shortcuts as it can and aping off the giants that came before it. Already put out my thoughts on how I think it really could have leaned into the 12 year fiasco a lot better, leverage Duke's status as an outdated gaming icon to make something a bit more interesting and actually institute a lot of old school design which would have been fresh in 2011. 
or 2012, whenever this came out. But here we are, tons of tired, lazy sex jokes, QTEs, middling shooting mechanics, all amounting to a forgettable gray blob of mediocrity. Is it a terrible game? No, it's not. I, I wish it was a terrible game. I, I wish it was Drake and the 99 Dragons, Postal 3, or Sonic 2006 style disaster, because then you could at least laugh at it. But w whatever, let me just get off my soapbox, sorry, and dust my hands off, because we are finally done with Duke Nukem Forever, as there really is absolutely no reason to pan the camera down and zoom in on anything else that you see on this screen. God. Damn it! Ugh, next time on Matt Newcomb Forever. Wait, this is kind of good?